Uranium mining and nuclear energy have been controversial topics for decades now. Saskatchewan is one of the world's largest exporters of uranium ore, but none of the cities in this province yield any of this uranium for energy. Not only is there a high startup cost associated with building and operating a nuclear power plant, a recent survey done by the Sylvia Fedora Canadian Centre for Nuclear Innovation found that people in Saskatoon were still not completely in favour of nuclear power. Their survey showed that 66% would support Saskatoon generating nuclear power in the future, but 56% were opposed to storing the nuclear waste in the province, and there was a 44-43% split as to whether or not nuclear power was safe or harmful. But despite all that, 77% of people still supported the uranium mining industry, and this is not at all surprising considering that industry employs thousands. Mining for uranium is very similar to mining for any other metallic mineral. The typical methods are underground mining or open pit mining or in situ recovery mining where you pump a solution down and recover the uranium from what returns to the surface. The difference is, is that there's some additional aspects that need to be managed in the, in the mining and that would be the radiation that's present with the uranium underground and we have to take extra steps to uh, protect our workers from that and you know all of these uh, risks are easily managed but they do kind of put you on your toes and it's uh, a little bit more complex to mine uranium than other minerals but essentially the basic technologies are the same. So as our lead regulator the CNSC is at our facilities you know, regularly and they apply a, a higher standard to us for environmental and safety performance than you would experience with other metal mines. So really we're more heavily and intensively regulated than other mining operations. But you know, in meeting these higher standards that you know, we've been you know, subjected to them for a long time and I think that it's built a culture within the company where and people are used to meeting very high standards and you know taking the extra step to ensure that that the uh, environment is protected and the company has a kind of an initiative called environmental leadership where you know we our goal is to meet all of the uh, regulations that are applied to us but also to go beyond them and to you know minimize the impact of our operations as far as possible the SRC is remediating legacy uranium mines and mills in northern Saskatchewan. These sites were developed in the 1950s and 60s when there was a big uranium boom and they were abandoned after a few years with very little or, or to no decommissioning. We work with consultants and contractors to clean the sites up. Uh, we do have, have them help us with site assessment, um, planning the remediation and then actually doing the remediation and that could range from taking hazardous waste to the south for proper disposal burying uh, benign waste, recontouring steep slopes, sealing mine openings, treating uh, contaminated water, things like that. I would tell um, uh, today's operators of uranium mines to keep good records of their operations and their waste management in particular. Um, I would tell them that the decommissioning plants that they're required to have now in today's regulatory environment are, um, if they're practical and they're comprehensive, will help to ensure that the legacy that they leave behind is a positive one and not the um, financial burden that is placed on future generations that we're dealing with with these um, sites that were developed by earlier miners. The trend in the nuclear industry historically has been towards very large scale plants, typically using a solid fuel um, contained in some kind of rod. The drive has been towards the lowest possible price of electricity in order to compete with other bulk baseload electricity providers. And so there's the opportunity for the nuclear industry to come in and displace that CO2 production by producing power on new nuclear plants. And these are typically much smaller. Um, they're being designed in a way so that they are modular, which means they can be built in a factory 
where the quality assurance is much better controlled, the amount of work that's taking place on the site is, is much less. Um, so overall, you are much more confident that you can build to, to time and to cost. The story about Fusion is that it was 30 years away when it started and it's still 30 years away today. Um, uh, that, that indicates that, that there have been some challenges as, as we move forward. We know we can create fusion. Um, the challenge has been how do you sustain it and get more energy out than you manage to put in. Uh, the people in the fusion business would observe that um, technologies tend to develop on an exponential type curve. So very little change takes place, very little change takes place, very little change takes place, then it starts to pick up and then suddenly over a very short period of time you go through that development stage. The people in the fusion business are saying that if you look at their developments they are on that pickup part of that curve. So their expectation is that things could change very very quickly. Um, but uh, I wouldn't like to speculate on I interviewed a total of seven staff and students, but I was turned down by a lot more because most people weren't comfortable speaking about a topic they hardly knew of. This didn't surprise me, but what did was that most people were paying their electricity bill having little to no idea where this energy actually came from. And because my project was about uranium mining, some people even assumed that Saskatoon generated some of its energy from uranium, which of course it doesn't. I think I have a pretty good idea of where my energy comes from in terms of electricity and, and heat. So I know that Saskatoon Light and Power gets their power or energy from a variety of input sources, including hydro, some wind, some solar, um, but probably mostly coal burning plants. I know very little about it. I basically paying the energy bill every month. Um, I know where some of my energy comes from, but mostly um, it's not something that I look into and I just get a bill from SAS Power. I think most of it in the city comes from coal. That's where the majority of it is from. I, I'm not as clear on where natural gas comes from in terms of how it arrives at my house, but um, <laughs> or if it's coming from uh, just Saskatchewan or, or some larger source of, of power. I know very little about uranium mining, except for what I was told today. I know that happens up north. I've never been around um, that far up there, but I don't know the effects on on nature and and the land, anything in the water or anything like that. I know how they generally dispose of the waste. I knew that before, but I don't know much about the actual mining process. Extracting uranium from the ground, which uh, can then be used for nuclear fuel for nuclear reactors. I can imagine that it's not very environmentally friendly, just because the uranium is radioactive, so the waste would be very radioactive. With uranium as an energy source, like lots of energy sources, if, if you can generate the electricity close to where it's going to be used, that's better for the grid. The grid doesn't have to be as big. So with uranium, um, usually the electricity is being generated by plants that are relatively close to the population source and further relatively from the source of the uranium ore. Um, I think I would be opposed. Um, our land is so useful for farming that I feel that close to Saskatoon there's not a lot of great farmland left and if we do that it would just take another chunk of our, our available land away from us. Yeah, I consider it fairly clean energy because you have very little uh, waste material coming from it, whereas coal mining, you get so much uh, pollution from it. I'm not sure how I would feel about that. I, I, I think that that's a really... Um, interesting question for society to tackle and, and it has tackled it in a variety of different settings. Ontario has a nuclear power, Japan generates tons of their electricity from nuclear sources, um, European countries do. It, it's not uncommon so um, the extent to which new ones will go through this, new locations will go through those same debates I think is really intriguing. I know there's a whole stigma associated with you know building, well the use of uranium, first of all, for clean energy, but I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think 
uranium and you know nuclear energy is a good shift at least away from you know fossil fuels and greenhouse gas emissions so i mean a mine itself yeah mines are always kind of associated with negative things however for the sake of moving towards green energy yeah i wouldn't i don't think i'd be too opposed to it wow well i i think that Saskatchewan should move forward in clean energy. I think it needs to be regulated for sure. There should be, um, and there probably is, a governing body that does follow up and just take a close watch that the toxicity isn't, isn't affecting longer than necessary. They should look at more renewable resources like wind and solar. I think we should start building a couple nuclear reactors because it is a fairly clean source of energy and it is quite safe contrary to popular belief. We need to accept that there are lots of different sources that can be added to let's say the electricity grid if we're thinking of that as the one energy source of this discussion um, because nuclear doesn't provide um, necessarily heat for homes unless they're getting their heat through electrical sources or electricity. I think there definitely needs to be a reduction in the amount of uh, greenhouse gas emissions or you know for example um, coal being used to generate energy and I think that one of the better options would be uh, nuclear energy. I know Ontario uses it quite a bit. I think moving towards that but also even investing in more renewable sources like solar energy and wind energy it's a good start. I mean there's a long way to go but it could happen. As with most of the general public, the staff and students that I had interviewed's biggest concerns with nuclear energy had to do with the safety of these facilities and the radioactive waste left behind. So imagine a technology that solves both of these problems, the clean energy production and the waste, and this actually exists. I have this nuclear reactor that can run entirely on nuclear waste. It consumes the waste, reducing its radioactive lifetime while simultaneously generating enormous amounts of electricity. Right now, just to put some scope on the problem, there's 270,000 metric tons of high-level nuclear waste that exists worldwide. And no one knows what to do with it yet. Most of this waste is just sitting above ground in spent fuel casks like this, waiting for someone to come up with a solution. And that's where my technology comes in. We can take this spent nuclear fuel and extract almost all of its remaining energy, which translates into a very, very large amount of electricity. To, to put some numbers on it, you can take all 270,000 metric tons of spent nuclear fuel that exists worldwide and turn it into enough electricity to power the entire world for 72 years. So powering the entire world for 72 years, even taking into account increasing demand, while simultaneously getting rid of almost all of its nuclear waste. So there's enormous potential here. That was Dr. Leslie Duan talking about a molten salt reactor that would convert nuclear waste into electric power. This transatomic system is just one of many reactors being developed in labs all across the globe. Current light water reactors rely on a radioactive rod that is generally only useful for about four years in which only 3% of its nuclear material is spent, leaving behind the remaining 97% as waste. Not only does the nuclear industry produce more jobs than any other energy sector while producing some of the lowest carbon emissions, nuclear power also has the lowest amount of deaths per kilowatt hour. There have been a total of 90 deaths in the nuclear industry, all from Chernobyl and Fukushima, but that's not to say that all the nuclear meltdowns we've experienced had not left their own long-term side effects on human health. But the uranium mining and nuclear industries also face a lot of public criticism, especially from those directly affected by the industries. Here's a clip of Candace and Maria's Paul who live in Treaty 10 in northern Saskatchewan, sharing their views on how uranium mining has affected their community in the last 40 years. We hear a lot from the workers. Um, workers tell us of some of the practices that happen, like they've, had to, they've been told to bury uh, radioactive garbage in the muskegs. The muskeg is a big, big swamp. So it's getting into the waters and they know this. And a lot of them feel like it's the only job in the area. They promised economic prosperity. 
We didn't get economic prosperity, we got a class system. The guys that work there, a lot of them feel that the work they're doing is hurting the earth and they, it, it is hurting their spirit. Uh, we know that there were studies done uh, on, the, on the meat, on the fish, and it shows that there's heavy metals and radionuclides in it, but this was never made public. It was available on the internet, but people didn't know it was there. They didn't even know there was a study. So all of this meat and stuff is affected, and that's what we eat. We don't get foods from the stores as much, because it's way too expensive. And this is affecting our, our, our families. People are starting to come down with cancers and other diseases. In our community of 700 people, 100 people are suffering from cancer now. And the nuclear industry and the health industry are tied together, they're partners. So we wanted a health study. There's never a baseline health study before they started. And they knew before they started because of what happened in Japan and so forth that it's going to affect us. One thing I learned doing this project is that there's definitely two sides to every story. But even more than that, it all comes down to education. The information is all out there, on the good and the bad, on the radiation therapy that saves thousands, and on the unsafe light water reactors that still hold the potential for future accidents, while also leaving behind an abundance of radioactive waste. Although there's tons of potential for nuclear energy to be safer and more effective in the future, we shouldn't overlook other renewable sources of energy, like solar and wind, especially here in Saskatchewan. And with Premier Brad Wall promising 50% renewable energy sources for Saskatchewan by 2030, now is definitely the time to invest in renewables. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. So my cad, I bought me a Jeep. I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. With a Geiger counter in my hand. I'm going out to take me some government land. Uranium fever has gone and got me down.